So in the last video, we went over the conceptual formation of a PN junction. So we said that if we take a P-type material and an N-type material, and we somehow fuse them together, so we just stick them together if we, if we want, so we've got a P-type material and an N-type material, then we said that the P-type material, which has a bunch of negatively charged acceptors along with positively charged holes, Uh, we said that these, some of these holes are going to diffuse into the N region. And similarly, some of the electrons in the N-type semiconductor are going to diffuse into the P region. And that's going to leave behind what's called the depletion region. So it's this region, and I'm going to erase these electrons near the edge, so there's no ambiguity here. And there's this depletion region formed uh, right here. And this is a region that has no mobile charge carriers. And there's an electric field uh, pointing from the right to the left, which repels electrons from the N-type semiconductor and holes from the P-type semiconductor. So once they diffuse, uh, they're essentially stuck. The electric field is preventing them from going from one direction to the other. But what's the strength of the electric field and how big is this depletion region? And well, these, these are questions that we can't answer without the use of band diagrams. And that's why, uh, that's why we've been studying them up to this point. So if we want to draw the band diagram for a PN junction, um, it's not entirely clear how we might do that. But we know that we can draw the band diagram for a P-type material. We know how to draw that, right? We've got the conduction band up here, and then the intrinsic Fermi energy, and then the valence band down here. And then somewhere down here, we're not really sure where, depends on the doping concentration, is our Fermi level EF. And we know that uh, this quantity here, this difference between these two, uh, these two energy bands, uh, EI minus EF, we have a formula for that. It's just, recall, uh, KT times the natural log of the acceptor concentration divided by the intrinsic carrier concentration. So we know how to draw this, uh, the p-types band diagram. And similarly, we know how to draw the n-types band diagram as well. Um, so if we want to draw the n-type band diagram, we say, well, it's also got a conduction band here. Uh, its Fermi level is pretty close to the conduction band because it's an n-type material. And it's got an intrinsic Fermi level and it's got a valence band. Now, the only thing you need to know to draw the complete band diagram of the P-type and N-type uh, junction, the P-N junction, is that the Fermi level, EF, is constant as a function of X at equilibrium. So across the entire semiconductor at equilibrium, doesn't matter how big the semiconductor is, doesn't matter how many different types you've got, the Fermi level is constant, period. So we can draw just a straight line across for our Fermi level because it's going to be constant throughout the entire semiconductor. And that's why I drew this N-type uh, band diagram a little lower than the P-type band diagram because I knew this was coming. Um, so if we want to complete our drawing, all we need to do is connect the two. And it's not entirely clear how we should do that, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to cheat and leave that for the next video. But for now, just know that to connect these two, we need uh, this little curvy region. It's actually uh, two parabolas that meet at the meet at the center, and I'll go over why that is in the next video. But so this is this is our complete p-n junction band diagram, and we know all the energy levels. Uh, similarly, here we know EF minus EI. Uh, that's just KT times the natural log of ND divided by NI, and so uh, collectively both. 
from this n-type region and this p-type region, if we've got some electrons over here in the conduction band of the of the n-type region, and they want to move over to this p-type region, they face this big energy barrier. This what we call the built-in potential, QVBI, and that's exactly like saying uh, there's an electric field that's pushing them back as they try to climb this energy barrier, as they try to go from the end, end side to the P side. So, so using this built-in potential, we can calculate the electric fields, uh, and we will do that in the next video. Uh, but first, what is the built-in potential? Well, we, we see that it's just the distance between this conduction band, the conduction band on the end side, and the conduction band on the P side, if we just extrapolate this out a little bit. Well, the distance between the two conduction bands, uh, that should be the same as the distance between the two valence bands, right? Because there's no, uh, each, each independent side uh, has the same distance between the conduction and the valence bands. The only thing that's different is the, the location of the Fermi level. And similarly, the distance between the two intrinsic um, Fermi, uh, Fermi levels is the same between the two. So we have equations that describe the distance from this Fermi level, from the intrinsic Fermi level of the n-type semiconductor to the Fermi level of the whole material. And we also have an equation from the Fermi level of the whole material to the intrinsic Fermi level of the p-type material. So all we need to do is add those two. So if we just add the two equations that we have, uh, we'll get kt times the log of, if we're adding two logarithms, it's just the same as multiplying their, uh, the coefficients inside. That's just Na, which is the doping concentration of the p-type semiconductor, times Nd, which is the doping concentration of the n-type semiconductor, uh, divided by Ni squared. And so this is, uh, and if we want, instead of an energy, if we want a voltage, uh, this is VBI. So this quantity is uh, incredibly important in semiconductors, and it's typically given as around 0.7 volts for silicon diodes. If you've ever done any circuit analysis, this is where uh, that 0.7 volts comes from. So now that we know the built-in potential between the two sides, we're going to be able to work backwards uh, to find the electric field within the depletion region and to find the size of the depletion region. And so uh, that's what we're going to cover in the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.